To create a character animation, you need a character. Kind of makes sense. And you could build your own character. That might take a little time. Let's get a shortcut going so this way you could just experience what it is to animate a character using motion capture clips and then delve a little deeper into this topic and start to wire up your own character. And then you can dive a little deeper into this topic in a different video on how to rig up your own character and even how to create your own characters. There's two great places to get characters that will work with motion capture clips from Mixamo. Well, one is Mixamo, and you could find different characters here. This is a previous character that was put through the Mixamo process and is ready to animate whether in Maya, Blender, Unity, or Unreal. Instead of using this character that has its own video, I'm going to start with a new character, and I'm not going to use a Mixmo character. If you want a Mixmo character, sign in to Mixmo.com, use an Adobe ID that is not attached to a corporate account, sign up at Adobe.com for your own personal account that's not related to any of your apps, and it's totally free, and then come to Mixmo.com. You can surf through the different characters and make a new incognito window. Then I'm going to readyplayer.me. Click on create avatar. You can choose feminine. I'm not gonna be using camera, but I will pick a file. And this is the character I'll be using. Um, no resemblance really to anyone famous. Click on accept. And it's not gonna be perfect, but it'll get you in the ballpark of a customization of a character. You could do this with your own photo. Down here, you could choose the different skin tones. And along this bar, a little lower, you can customize your character. I'm just going to choose a new outfit. And you could choose hair types, facial hair, eye color, and have a lot of fun with this. And of course, a hat or something like that. I'm going to skip over hats and everything. This is just an introductory tutorial. Click on Enter Hub. So if you don't want to use a photo, you'll get a generic grouping of avatars looks that you could pick from. If you use a photo, it'll be that much closer to your vision. You can work with this model to even sculpt it to be more like you want it to be. The next part is to download your character. And I'm going to click this button right here. It's going to download it as a GLB file. It's a wonderful format. It doesn't go straight into Maya and other applications. So this has to be converted. Let me copy this file. And I'm just going to put it into my folder. And I'll give it a shorter name. To convert this GLB file into something that Mixmo can use, and let's look at the formats for Mixmo. Going under Character, Upload a Character. The file types that can be used are FBX, OBJ, and a zip file which would contain your textures. I'm going to go for the FBX that's going to include textures. The way to convert this GLB file to an FBX file, I'm going to use Blender. But you can't just use any version of Blender. You have to use version 3.0 or earlier. And that's because in the current version of 3.1, there's a little glitch that you can import and export the GLB into an FBX file. Excellent. But in 3.1, the textures won't show up as an FBX, and that will be a big bummer. You want to see your character in its full outfit. So just download an older version of Blender, 3.0, and 3.0 really isn't that old. And you can have multiple copies of Blender on your computer. And we're just using Blender as a way to transform this file, GLB, into FBX, so then it's compatible with Mixmo and other applications. This is Blender. 2.93. To get the correct version of Blender that will allow you to export your character as an FBX with the texture, with the textures attached to it, look up Blender previous versions and you'll be led to a link on blender.org. Click on all previous versions. You just have to pick a version of Blender before Blender 3.1. Version of Blender 3.1. If you import a GLB file with textures and then you export it again as an FBX, the textures won't be attached to the FBX. So you're not going to see your character in color. Just use a previous version of Blender where it was all working nicely. And 
you can have multiple copies of Blender on your computer at the same time, I recommend installing an older version of Blender, such as Blender 3.0. Hopefully in the next version of Blender, this will be fixed. With that done, let me jump back to Blender. The basics of navigating the viewport, though you don't need to navigate the viewport to do this task, could be a simple import export. Hold down the middle mouse button, will orbit the view. The, the shift key and middle mouse button will pan. And the control key and middle mouse button will zoom in and zoom out. Or you can use the wheel on the mouse with a wheel to zoom in and zoom out. These are the basics of just orbiting. Select the cube in the center, delete it, don't need that. Import that GLB file that was just downloaded, go to file import and select GLTF. The GLB is a binary version of the GLTF format. Click on import and your character will show up. To zoom in, just press the control key and the middle mouse button to zoom in to orbit. Middle mouse button just pressed in. Now you see your character doesn't have any textures on it, but it does. We're just not seeing the textures. Just go up here and click this viewport shading. Give it a second to load in the textures, and there's the character with the textures on it. Excellent. To export this as an FBX, so you can use it in other applications, and in particular Mixmo with this workflow. Select your character by just left-clicking and drawing marquee selection. The next step, File, Export, select FBX. Choose the file location, and after you name it, there's still one important step. Just don't click on Export. And I'll call this character number 11. On this side, under path mode, select copy and click this button right here, enable textures. So you need both copy and enable textures. This will pack the textures into the FBX file, which is something you definitely want to do. Click on export. You're all done. Don't need Blender open anymore. I'm not going to save this. Go to Mixmo and sign into Mixmo.com. Click on the Characters tab right here. Click on Upload Character. And when you upload character, it bumps the other one out. So goodbye to this character. And if you want this character again, just upload your previous character. So it doesn't save your characters online, but that's okay. You have them locally. Select your character.fbx file and just drag it to the drop zone. And in a few seconds, we'll see your character with the texture maps on it. If you don't see the texture maps, that means a newer version of Blender was used to export 3.1 where there's that glitch, or copy and that little square button weren't selected. There's our character with full textures. If your character looks okay, right now I just want to get going as quick as possible. I'll click on next, and next again. And there's our character in the T-Pose. I'm going to download this character just like this in the T-Pose. So download. FBX character in the T-Pose. And click on download. Now that I have my character in the T-Pose, I'm going to jump to the Animations tab. And I'm going to just pick one animation to start with, just a walk. And now you can pick your different types of walks. even this tiptoe walk. If you're going to be using this animation in a game engine, then it's okay to have some root motion. If you're not going to be using it in a game engine and you just want the easiest time possible getting started with animating in 3D and you want your character to continuously walk, then choose in place. And when you animate in place, you can see your character is now standing still and it looks like it's feet are slipping, that's okay, because you would just move this character in your 3D scene in order to give the illusion of walking. Otherwise, it would be a little challenging to create a repeating motion cycle where the character walks forward over and over again when something like this, because the end position then has to match the next end position to get your character going forward. So when starting out, choose in place. I'm just going to go with a regular walk in place. Going to download this one. Download. I'm downloading this FBX with the skin, which means the whole character and this motion applied. Download. This is a real quick start, and then other videos will cover how to take more control of the character, combine animations and timeline editor, and have a lot more fun. Create a new project. Just drag that file that has the skin attached to it 
which is your model and the animation, and just put it into your scene. You could also do file import if you didn't want to drag and drop. Circles or bones that are way too big, and we'll get that fixed in a moment. Press the six key to see the character with the textures attached, and in Maya, orbiting is option key, left mouse button. Adding is middle mouse button, dragging up and down, left and right. You could also use the wheel to zoom in and zoom out. And option key, left mouse button, dragging up and down to zoom in and zoom out. Let's fix something before I show you the animation. And that's just these bones that are way too big. Go under Windows, Setting Preferences, Preferences, and scroll down to Display Kinematics and decrease the bones, which is joint size, as a display. Just to make your scene nice and neat. That wouldn't affect the animation or the rendering of the animation because bones don't render unless you go out of your way to make them render. Just makes it a little easier to see. So are you ready to see the animation? Just click on the timeline and drag forward. There's your character walking in place. That was the demo of the character walking in place. Let me go back to walk again, and I'll select this walk or the sneaky walk. I know I posted it a little later, but I'll use the sneaky walk just to make it go forward. And I'll download this character. And since it's a quick demo, I'm not blending motions together, I'm going to download it with the skin on it and click on download. I'm going to select that file. And I'll call this Sneak. Give me a sec just to copy this to my folder. Keeping files organized, very important. I'll close this window. This is walking in place. And another video is going to show you how to just keep on looping this animation. So you continue walking and churning and things like that. For now, let's do. I'm going to do File New. I'm going to drag in that Sneak. zoom out and press the six key the reason the bones don't look exploded like before the joints aren't that big is because that preference is already set for the scene now i'm going to drag the timeline you can see it's going to walk away from that grid and sneak on forward so congratulations you kind of created an animation so dragging the timeline is here scroll through the animation you could also click the play button click play button click on this setting right here because if you select this as play every frame look how fast this character is going to sneak that's not a sneak sneak that's a quick sneak and that's because Maya is processing all those frames way quicker than real time so just click on this setting right there and choose 30 frames per second click on save and play or play backwards, sneak back to where you once came from. So that's it for this video. You've seen the whole process of creating a character the quickest way possible, either Ready Player Me or use a Mixmo character, bringing that into Mixmo if it's a Ready Player Me character, normalizing it so Mixmo can understand its bone structure of that Ready Player Me character or use the Mixmo character that already has bones in it, applying some motions, downloading some motion if it's the initial character. All those other motions that will be blended onto the skeleton, onto this character, don't need the skin that those motions are really animations of the joint system and that will be applied to the joint so that's why you'll need one skinned character for your scene one character with all the meshes seen and everything else is applied as a bone animation to keep that take five take five to let that take six to let that character move throughout the scene to make that character do other actions within your scene